I worked for a president of the United States for five years. There we go. Um, now we're to the meat of the conversation. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> now we're to the meat of the conversation. What's up, guys? Welcome into another episode of the Cutting Up Podcast. Today we have the owner of Cutting Edge Painting Company here in Knoxville, Tennessee, and my friend, who actually goes way back, longer than I even realized, uh, Jesse Castillo. How are we doing, my man? Doing well, doing well. Doing Thank good. You. Yep. Good to have you in today, my man. Let's uh, let's get started with this haircut, and then we'll start chatting, my man. Uh, All right. Same as always. Same two as on always. the top, skin fade on the sides, clean up the beard a little bit. Yeah. Awesome. Yep. My man. Awesome. So how are we doing today? Doing well? We're doing well, well. You know, it's working outside. It's good to be inside for a little bit, you know? Getting some now it's there. It's a little bit cloudy outside today, so that might affect you guys or what? A little bit. Around two, maybe three o'clock, it's gonna rain, but it should be good by then. My man, cutting edge painting. So tell me, uh, what made you wanna start that? Well, I've been painting for 25 plus years. Always worked for companies and it just was never right. It was never a good fit, you know, working for somebody else. Um, got let go from a company recently, well, I'd say about more than three years ago, and then I started my own thing. Um, it was just the timing. It was the right time. And uh, things been going well since then, or? Very well, yeah. Extremely busy. Um, been all over the place. I try to stick to Knoxville and surrounding areas, but I mean, sometimes I go a little bit outside, see more in those areas. Now, 25 years, you said, right? You, yep. You've been you've been a painter, and yep. in all the different city, states, locations, never once owned your own. Never so once. this was the first one, right? Yep. Give us your toughest challenge in that, trying to, uh, going from just being a painter, and you probably managed sites and work sites before, but oh, yeah. actually running the, the painting company there, uh, what's the biggest challenge for you? Biggest challenge at first was um, just getting your name out there. Really just showing people what you can do and actually doing what you say. That's a huge thing, especially in Knoxville. If you have an appointment, stick to it. People see that, you know. Make sure you're on time or before time. People see that. I mean, it's a, it's a huge thing to to keep your word. Especially you know, in this industry, it's, it's huge. I noticed you said especially Knoxville. Yeah. Why did you say especially Knoxville? Is, that, is it different here than in other places you've been? It is, and, and the people will tell you that. Customers will tell you, wow, you, you're on time, or you're early, you know? Because I've, I've noticed a lot of people there, they're just re they're relaxed, you know? Yeah. And they just, you know, I'm not like that. Time is everything. So tell me this, my man, what, what makes Cutting Edge different than any other painting company here in Knox, my man? What, what sets you guys apart? What sets us apart is the owner being at every job site. Mm. The owner's name is on everything. Mm. And the phone number that is on the van is in my pocket. And you're not calling a call center. You're not calling somebody in an office. You know, you're calling me personally. And if I don't get to you, if I don't answer the phone, if I'm on another call, I will call you back right away. I'm not, I'm not, one that just lets anything go. Do you enjoy that? I do enjoy that. I yeah. do. That's I do. tough. As, a, as another small business owner that has the same exact situation, that's tough to know that. That's a lot of pressure, first off, to know that everything that's done that comes in and out of, for the barbershop example, comes in and out of the store, whether I'm the one that does the haircut or one of my other guys, that's coming back on me ultimately. You know, every exactly. review matters. Everything that, every, everything that everybody says matters because you're not a big corporation and one or two opinions can make or break you know your business there so it's a lot of pressure and to know that it's all on you oh yeah Some people don't like that that's what you know carries a lot of people outside of even being business owners is they're like listen i love my craft i might be great at my craft but i don't want the headache every night of having to think about those kind of things you know exactly and i do i stress a lot about the little things but in the end, my fingerprint's on it. Yeah, you have to, I think, in order to be successful, man. If you're not stressing about that, if you're just letting it kind of just, all right, whatever happens, happens, I don't think you're gonna, you're gonna do very well, you know? And a lot of people like that, that you can actually talk to the owner of the company 
without going through 10 steps to get to them. Yeah. So I'm, I want the question I want to ask you that I've been, I feel like asking a lot of people is as you know, the barbershop continues to grow and, you know, looking for more barbers and trying to fill seats. It's the whole managing people aspect, right? Like I, you know, being a barber to me is pretty simple. I love cutting hair. I've gotten, you know, some would say good at it. Yeah. And uh, that that's simple. Talking to my clients, I can do that all day. I can do all that. But now as we start managing people and growing, I don't want to say I'm necessarily nervous, but I'm, I'm more intrigued to see how that process is going to go for me. So for you, yeah. someone that's managed crews, probably large crews at other companies and managed them underneath cutting edge here, what do you find as, you know, maybe some of the, some tips you might get for managing people or, and then even some advice from maybe mistakes you've made in the past? Well, it's trust. For me, uh, you have to be around the guy for a while before you can let him off on his own. You have to know a guy's character before you can let him. Just being at someone's house alone. You never know, you can't really trust anyone until you're around them for a while. Um, and it's hit or miss. With my industry, it's hit or miss. You hire guys that they, can, they say they can do the world and I can paint everything and you find out they can't. <laughs> so you have to start payoff at a reasonable rate without going too high because you can't go down, you know? You can only go up. And I found some, a lot of guys, you know, they were, weren't just a rank fit for our company. That's funny, man. You, you probably have a lot of characters in your uh, industry. Yeah. And I can say that because our, my industry has the same. And so, you know, I feel like both, though now the difference between me and a painter and a barber, obviously to me, a barber in a licensed shop, you do have to be licensed yourself. Yeah. And so, but I feel like the same way with painting where it's like, there's a lot of people that are like, oh yeah, I can paint. I've been painting, blah, blah. I get the same thing with barbers. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. I, I know how to cut hair. I've been cutting hair, blah, blah, in my garage for so long. You know what I mean? Now, thankfully we have the licensing thing that stops a lot of people, but oh, yeah. I can only imagine what it'd be like if there wasn't that barrier to prevent, you know, just everybody from being a barber like there is for probably your industry. I mean, I'm sure you've seen some some characters and have some stories, man. Oh yeah, I've, I've hired guys from their 70 years old down to 18 or 19. I mean, it's, and it's really hit or miss. I mean, a lot of guys, they do have a great work ethic and they have, you know, experience. But on the other hand, they just, they don't get along with other guys, you know. And that's hard because we have to work together. We have to paint a house. We all have to work together. We can't have anyone fall up a ladder or, you know, we have to trust each other. Yeah. So I want to get into your background a little bit first off, uh, or now that we've got some of that out of the way here, because it's, it's pretty interesting if you ask me. Uh, you're actually, now are you from Fort Wayne or you grew up in Florida and then you ended up in Fort Wayne? I was born and raised in Florida. Born and raised uh, in Florida. When did you end up in Indiana? My dad moved to Indiana when I was really young, but I still stayed in Florida and then I visited on the summers, uh, Fort Wayne all the time. Gotcha. Um, but yeah, I grew up in Florida. I lived in, lived in Fort Wayne off and on with my dad, but I was always with my mom in Florida. Yeah. So to give the back story from my point of view, after we open up the shop, probably within the first month or so, I would say, Jesse comes in and Jesse yeah. comes in and says, dude, I know your dad. And I'm like, what? Like yeah. who in Tennessee knows my dad? Like they've never lived anywhere. They've always been in Indiana. They never left Indiana. Like they're, they're not people that have traveled around and I didn't expect, you know, here in Knoxville, even after I'd been here for a few years for someone to know my dad. And so it turns out you, I guess, so it's probably young adult life. We're in Fort Wayne. Yeah. You got to know my dad, my uncles, yeah. my grandpa, all of them, right? Yeah. How did you meet them? Um, I met them through a cousin of theirs. Um, I think I met Adam first, your uncle Adam. And uh, we clicked. I mean, we were, you know, from the start, you know, good friends. Yeah. And then I met your um, your dad. I met, I worked with your, actually your uncle Adam and your, your grandfather at a, at a foundry in Indiana. Um, so I knew, you know, a lot of all your, your, your family. Mm -hmm. And I met a lot of them slowly here and there. I like Indiana. Indiana's a, especially Fort Wayne, small town feel. Yeah, you don't like it. Right. No one likes Indiana. 
<laughs> well, I tolerated Indiana. Say that. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. I like visiting. I should say that. I'm joking. I, I like Indiana. I die there. You do. I, it's just. It's a different vibe, Indiana and Tennessee. You know. It's more the family and people there, though, that would that, oh, that I go back for. The Indiana itself, I hope, you know. Yeah, I saw my dad again. My dad's whole side of his family lives there. So when do you go back to Florida? You lived in Indiana for how many years? Uh, probably off and on. A, well, I would say seven to ten years off and on. Okay. And then you go back to Florida. Yeah, right? I moved back from. But well, where have you? Where all have you lived? Um, Florida. Indiana, Texas, um, and here. I'm trying to follow the timeline here, but I'm just gonna jump to my point. At some yeah. point, you get right. back down to Florida yeah. and you end up at whose house? Um, I worked for a president of the United States for five years. There we go. Um, now we're to the meat of the conversation. That's it. <laughs> now we're to the meat of the conversation. You worked for a president. Yeah, I worked for, for five years. For five years. Um, three before he was president and two after. Great experience. And I loved every minute of it. Um, the only reason why I left was my daughter and school. Just growing up down there or what? Yeah, um, not great school systems. I went through the school systems there and I just didn't want her to go through that. Crowded classrooms, you know, and it just, overall South Florida is, is not an ideal place for me in my mind to raise our daughter. So me and my wife decided to move here because she has her own, some of her best friends live here. And I've always loved visiting here, so. We decided and we moved. So how did you come about that opportunity to work for the president of the United States? Um, one of my friends, her mom, um, shout out to Jessica, Jessica Gilbert. Um, her mom worked there and she told me about the opportunity and I, and I contacted the guy and um, he actually hired another guy before me, but that guy never showed up. So then he called me and uh, I said, yes. And I took the opportunity and I loved it. You know, it's, I thought it was amazing. Now, are you allowed to say the name or no? Can't technically say the name. Well, you could, I can say the name. Um, it was Donald Trump, you know, 45. Um, and I gotta say that he treats his employees, I mean, very well. That's not what well. the media would want you to believe, though. Well, yeah, well, they don't see the insides of everything, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but I loved it. They, um, I, I had a great experience, and I still talk to a lot of people that work there. What was one that you say he treats his employees or his people very well? What's, what's one thing that set out for you from your time over there? Well, really, a lot of the benefits that you get just for working there, I mean... Yeah, it's, it's, as a painter, you have winter and you have fall, you know, here, and it gets yeah. slow. Yeah. Uh, one of the benefits of working there is you work all year round. Rain, shine, it doesn't matter. You're always doing something. Um, pay was great. And, I mean, he fed us everything. I mean, it was, it was I mean, I loved it. To go to one place where you're going to a, a beautiful home, which is a members only club that he made. It was just amazing, you know, to, just to go there and just to see beauty all day. Now, was he actually the president when you were working for him or? For two years, yeah. For two years? Yeah. Was it the beginning of his term or the end of his term? Um, beginning. Okay, nice. It was a change, you know, going from just working there to then secret service everywhere. So yeah, it was a change, you know. So you did three years before he was actually president and yeah. two years during his president term. Yeah. And I assume that, yeah, that had to be a change because you probably, when you started, it was different. And then slowly as he's doing, you know, his debates and the primaries and all that. Yeah, it was a lot. to kind of ramp up and change. How many times do you get to meet him? Um, three times total. Three times? Yeah. I met him the first time I was at the golf course 
Uh-huh. And I was painting some windows at the guard shack. This was before he was president. Mm-hmm. He pulls up and he look and I knew it was him because it was a it was a white Rolls Royce Phantom. And I had my back turned because I was painting the window. Mm -hmm. And he stops and the window comes down. And he looks out and says, it's about time that got painted. <laughs> so I was just so nervous, you know. Yeah. I said, I sure, I sure needed a Mr. Trump. <laughs> he laughed and said, you're doing a good job. Thank you. And just pulled off, you know. What a guy. You're, you're, you're talking about a $10 billion guy talking to a $10 guy, you know. No, it's so, so short. I'm, I'm just saying, like, yeah, that's... He didn't have to do that, you know. Right. But that's just the way he is. He likes talking to people, and he is a very, mm -hmm. very personable guy. Now, if you're doing something he doesn't like, that's a different story, you know. But I guess that's with everything. Yeah. My industry as well. If, you don't, if you're not doing something I don't, you know, I don't agree with. Yeah, the same can be said for you and me as bosses. Oh, you know? yeah. I mean, if we're doing, our employees, our guys are doing something we don't like, then, you know, oh, yeah, you're going to say something, yeah. But that just shows also that he cares, you know what I mean? I think that that's, you know, like I said, the same thing for us. You know, if we didn't care and we just let our guys do whatever, then that would be a reflection of the business as a whole, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. And so just if you do care and you do get on to people, I think that, that that's what that proves, you know? If you're pointing out something that someone's doing that's, you know, you don't have to point that out. Yeah. You're paying someone to do a, a service for you. You don't have to point that out. I mean, if, but it's courtesy and it makes you feel good. It did me, I mean. Best job you ever had? Besides owning a business, yeah. Besides owning, yeah. 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 Job, you know? Yeah, that's a job. This, this is, is different. different. This yeah. is different, yeah, yeah. The best job you ever had. Oh, it was the best job I've ever had, yeah. My oh, man. That's pretty cool, man. That's pretty cool. And don't believe anything in greed of the papers or the <laughs> news. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, it's... It was different. They are different. The whole family is just amazing. Was there ever an instance where you literally were on site or something and then you read something different that happened or? Oh, all the time. Even to, the, to this day. It's... Everyone swears there's a, there's a golf course on Mar-a-Lago and there's not. There's a putting green. The golf course is five miles down the road. Why is that a debate though? What a... Because people think they know everything, you know, because <laughs> they heard it from a guy that heard it from a guy, you know? Yeah. It's always one of those. So if it hadn't been for the, the school systems and where you wanted to raise your daughter, you think you'd still be over there? Oh, yeah. That would be, you know. I would have, I mean, there's guys there that have been there 25, 30 years. Really? They, it's just that good of a place. You don't hear those stories, though, do you? Those aren't going on mainstream media. Not at all. And it's, you know, and that's good because there's a lot of things that yeah, you sign a waiver for that you can't say, you know. Right, of course. And that's, that's good. I mean, you have to always fall back on something, you know. Mm-hmm. Sheesh, what was that process like as far as getting cleared and security-wise and all that? I mean, that had to be a ton, right? Oh, yeah. Well, they run, they had, as soon as he became president, we're running for president, and he, they do background checks, Secret Service does at their checks. But. My man, so give us your, uh, your future plans for cutting edge, my man. Where do you see the business going? What do you, uh, what do you hope to happen in the near future or, or later on down the line, you know? Near future, I mean, just growing. I mean, growing to a point where you're, you're you're comfortable, yeah, you still have your finger on everything. Yeah. I don't want to get to a point where I'm too big where I can't go to a, a job site mm -hmm. and talk to a customer or answer a call or even answer a question for anyone. Yeah. I mean, our industry, I've noticed, is, is very secretive in what they did. Guys won't call you and say, you know, or you call a guy, I got a question about something. I know a lot of painters in the area. Uh-huh. But I do have a lot of guys call me and ask me questions about simple things, you know, what product is great for this, or and I'll answer it every time. I want to still be that guy, you know. 
That's crazy, man. I'm just sitting here thinking about it. Like, could you actually imagine just doing your everyday task, your normal job, and then the president pulls up, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> and obviously you work there, so it's like, you know what I mean? It's always a possibility, but I'm sure when you've been there for the last 600 days straight and you've never seen them, yeah. you're not expecting it, you know what I'm saying? So oh, I yeah. can't imagine to just be doing my everyday thing, doing a, a normal haircut like I normally would do, and then all of a sudden it's just bam, you know, someone of that magnitude, you know what I mean? Just pulling up on you and talking to you, that'd be nuts, man. I'd, I feel bad for whoever was in my chair at the time because I'd probably lose my mind. I'd start sweating bullets. You know? Oh, yeah. Or you even know what to say, you know what I mean? Like, Yeah, it was it was tough the first time he talked to me, and I was just... Just to say anything to someone, you know? Yeah. And not getting starstruck, it's just, you know, that's the owner. You know? Yeah, yeah, it's boss man. Yeah. On the highest level. Yeah, oh, yeah. The highest of levels, my man, well... Jesse, I appreciate you coming in here and chatting it up with us, my man. We're getting ready to wrap up now. All right. I would be remiss if I didn't, you know, get a little bit of uh, football talk in here toward the end. You're a big Chiefs fan, and we go back and forth online because we're in the same, oh, you know, yeah. the same conference, but we got to give you your flowers. You're coming off of a Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. Are they going to run it back this year or what? It's going to be tough. I mean, they're really hard. Probably the hardest ever because of such young guys, you know. Yeah. And we're we're drafting players nowadays. We can't get guys that, you know, that are worth, you know, the big time wide receivers or the, you know, the running backs. We have to draft guys down. And it's been working. Uh, they said you couldn't do it without Tyreek Hill. Wow. Look at us now. Yeah. Look at you now. Yeah. How but many, you're not gonna win because Tyreek has how many rings? Steelers here. Oh, it's the Steelers here this year. We'll see. Kenny Pickett has to get bigger hands, I think. Whoa. <laughs> now, what do you think of that Travis Kelsey fight in the offseason? Which one? He had like three. A couple of them. I saw the one where he like scored the touchdown and then somebody hit him late and so he got up and got I think he, and he just doesn't like to be touched anymore. He became a, you know, a little bit of a diva. He's on everything now, you know. He's got his podcast going, you know, and new idols, baby. Yeah, he doesn't like to get touched that much. I like it though. I actually think it's, a, you know what I mean? I feel like a lot of people, especially coming off the Super Bowl and being an all pro, you know, some people sit out those practices or halfway to them, you'll see them more on the sidelines, not really caring and kind of coast mode. And I feel like they're the opposite. You know what I mean? They're, let's go. Every rep matters. We're out here. We're fired up for a seven on seven all season, you know, yeah. just regular drills. I'd love to see it. Our biggest, our biggest acquisition that nobody talks about is Drew Tranquil. He's Drew, Fort Wayne. Fort Wayne, Indiana product. Sure. Yep. I like that pickup because he he can be everywhere. We were on the field together, me and him. You yeah. know that, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I worked him. You Not worked sure, him? Actually. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was on the sidelines in that game. Oh, well, that's it's all right. It's all right. That's all right. But I dreamed of it. I was ready. If Coach would have called my number, I would have. I know. I would have given it to him. Yeah, you would have tried. <laughs> <laughs> Show you this haircut, my man. Tell me what you think right there. Always great. A good moment. Always. Yeah. Short enough for you there. Yep. Yeah. That'll work. Perfect. Beard look good. Yep. Man, new man. He was waiting. We had him on hold on standby for this uh, this interview, so he waited a couple weeks for us, I a little know. bit longer than he normally does. So I'm gonna, I was going to go to great clips, but, you know, I had to wait. You know. Thank you, Jesus, <laughs> for both of our sakes. <laughs> My man, well, hey, before you leave, I want you to plug yourself real quick. Let's say there's someone here in Knoxville yep. that's interested in, in getting a painting job, getting a quote. How can they do that? Um like I said, my name is Jesse Castillo, I'm owner of Cutting Edge Painting of Knoxville. Um, you can get a hold of us. Um, call me directly, 865-235-8105. You can look us up on social media, um, Cutting Edge Painting of Knoxville, Instagram, Facebook. I mean, we're all over and we do great work and I guarantee our work to the fullest. Yes, sir, you heard it there, my man. Well, Jesse, I appreciate you coming in, my man. We'll go ahead and get you out of here. Thank you guys for watching. Go ahead and like, share, subscribe, and we will see you next episode. Peace out.